I think we'll get started. I know some people are still joining, um, but I would like to welcome everyone today. My name is Heidi Parker. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the programs manager here at UCLA Arts and Healing. Um, today we have our November Hope session, Say It Out Loud Gratitude Banners. And it's part of our free hope series, our healing online for people everywhere, which we created to support the resilience of our global community through social emotional arts. Each monthly workshop offers a supportive space for connection, healing, and empowerment as we navigate the changes in our world. And we're grateful you're all here to create and learn together today. Today's program is in a meeting format, so please keep yourself muted until prompted otherwise. And we also suggest you stay on gallery view throughout the session. If we spotlight something, you can always switch back. We are recording today's session to be shared on our YouTube channel. You are welcome to leave your cameras on as you feel comfortable, as we'd love for you to actively participate. Our session today is scheduled for an hour and a half, so feel free to add questions in the chat as they arise. So before we begin today's session, we would like to start by acknowledging the Tongva Nation on whose land the city of Los Angeles, where we are based, rests today. We hold respect and gratitude for the Tongva people who still consider themselves the caretakers of this land. And by their example, we are reminded of our responsibility to our planet and to one another. So let's take a moment in our own way to honor the indigenous communities of past and present on whose land you are joining from today. So I would like to welcome today's presenters, Sarah Lang and Maura Egan. They are art therapists with the Open Studio Project, and Sarah is also the executive director. OSP's mission is to bring art directly to individuals for personal growth, social emotional learning, and community well-being, serving a wide range of clients from early childhood through adulthood. They are joining us today from their studio in Evanston, Illinois. Welcome, and I will turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Just want to make sure you can hear us okay? Yes? Okay, great. Um, welcome to our studio. Um, we're here in um, South Evanston, which is just near Chicago. And um, the focus of our organization is um, definitely around personal growth, social emotional learning, and community well being. So we welcome you all here to our um, space today to have a hands on experience. Um, we're actually going to be leading a lesson, which is um, based on a fairly new curriculum that we've developed here specifically um, for the high school level. Um, these are based on um, years of practice. We've been around for about 30 years, but this is a very current curriculum based on work that we did at our local high school. Um, we decided to revise a new SEL um, aligned curriculum with art standards um, for high school health and wellness standards. So we also talk in the curriculum quite a bit about uh, mental health issues that our teens have faced due to the pandemic. So they're very current and it's sequential, um, but you will get to do one of the 12 lessons that are in this booklet. And we'll give some more information about that towards the end. Um, but this is actually where we're located right now in this storefront space right above here. Um, this is our main studio, but we now have two other studios nearby, one at a community center and one um, at another neighborhood near us that um, encompasses a lot of other nonprofits. So we have grown tremendously during the last three years of the pandemic, but we have been around for about 30 years. A lot of people study our methodology and our therapy curriculum. Um, our organization was started by three art therapists, um, including Pat Allen, whose books you may have come across, Art is a Way of Knowing, Art is a Spiritual Path. Um, but the key component of this art therapy modality is that there's no commenting or critiquing on the work. Um, and we always incorporate a writing component, um, both before and after the art making session. So you'll learn a little bit about why we do that. Um, next door to us in the space below is also our main office space where we have a mission focused gallery. Um, so right now we have an exhibit up called Sanctuary Between Worlds, which they've literally turned our gallery into what looks like a temple with really, really incredible um, paintings. Um, so if we get a chance at the end, maybe I'll walk you through there to see what that's like. I can't turn. 
Here, I got it. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I already mentioned our mission, so why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we went over the mission already a little bit, um, but we work from four core values, essentially, when we're doing work with Open Studio Project, and those values are creativity, personal growth, social emotional learning, and community well-being. So all of these values kind of come together to facilitate um, playful, creative art making that is self-reflective, that builds upon community awareness, diversity and equity. Um, and it, you know, builds on your own um your own mental well-being and your empathy along with it too. So um at OSP, we have several guiding principles that sort of set up our the framework that we work from. Um, so the first being is that creativity is everyone's birthright. Um, everyone's an artist. We try to create safe and comfortable spaces for people to explore their creativity in a non-judgmental um, arena. So that's the first one. Um, and I mentioned how we do writing um, in conjunction with the artwork. So we do what's called practicing intention at the forefront and witness writing at the back end. Um, and we definitely do art about things that matter to us personally. Um, we talk a lot about making art from our heart space and our gut space, and not so much from our head space. Like we really want to um, work on that intuitive part of our bodies um, to express emotions, identities. It can be about social issues. Um, obviously about all kinds of life issues. We frequently get people that are going through um, different transitions here because it inevitably opens us up more to creativity. So curiosity is a huge part of our practice and working from an intuitive space. Um, so we kind of use this sort of creative curiosity as a method of exploring, um, you know, times in life that are tough, whether it's transitional periods in your life. Um, we use this sort of uh, creative curiosity to explore that and to build, you know, healthy coping mechanisms, you know, to sort of deal with the discomfort that that might bring, but also to embrace change and to embrace that ambiguity. Yeah, that's really important. Um, so again, no, we don't comment or critique on the work, and we're going to ask that you not do that today as well. Um, this allows our artists to have more freedom for their expression and allow them to do what they need to do. Um, it puts aside judgment from ourselves and each other while teaching us to navigate our most authentic selves. So as a community studio, um, we do have some norms that we kind of um, implement in any physical space that we're in. So anytime Open Studio Project is in a space, we kind of follow these norms. A lot of them are around respect, respecting the space, each other, um, and our materials. Um, so we treat each other with respect and our materials. Um, we're mindful of the group and we like to support diverse voices. So, um, you know, we try and be, uh, sort of aware of everyone that's around us and how our words influence them or how our artwork influences them. Um, we also work on our personal development and the development of the community around us. That's really important. Um, a huge part of that is encouraging self-reflection, um, which kind of goes along with, um, you know, sharing with the group, you're gonna sort of use that self-reflection in the group setting as well. Um, we like to witness each other's work with self-awareness. That's sort of another piece of, the, you know, becoming self-aware and self-reflecting. Um, and we sort of give the choice to withhold images or writing from the group if we don't feel 100% comfortable. Um, and that's important to provide that choice in that space. Choice is big. So this is what our new curriculum looks like. Um, so this is essentially a um, 12 lesson high school level curriculum, although I would recommend it for like seventh and eighth graders, like more maturity, um, even adults can utilize these skills as well. Um, so really depending on the population that you work with, you may find that you can adapt this in different ways. 
Um, so you'll see on the left are the list of lessons and on the right are the SEL skills. Um, you can bounce around the lessons like we are doing today, but a lot of times we follow the sequence from one through 12 when we're conducting a series of workshops. Um, so today we're going to be doing lesson number six, which is called gratitude banners. Um, and, and we also call it say it out loud, which focuses on self, so self management and social awareness. So when we talk about self management, learning how to manage our own selves and emotions um, and be and developing skills to become more aware of those who are around us and the larger community in which we live. So this is actually pulled from our curriculum. All of this text sort of going forward um, is directly pulled from the curriculum. So if it looks a little wordy, don't worry about it. We're going to, you know, sort of summarize what it says. Um, so we've got an introduction to it. Um, on the left, we see um, some of the SEL um, sort of goals for the lesson. So we're looking at, as Sarah said, self-management, social awareness um identity and man uh so the kids are going to identify and manage emotions while they're working on this project they'll co cooperate with others appreciate and reflect on relationships that's a huge one with this project um they'll organize their work and develop solutions and they'll use personal personal intuition to create art while um sort of creating their cloth banner um, on the right is sort of a general descriptor of the project. So if you want to read through that, you're more than welcome to. Um, it sort of explains in different words, you know, what the goals of the project are um, and, you know, what the what the general intention of making this gratitude banner is. <laughs> I think you have to click it again. There okay, we go. Thank you. Um, so um, just to give you, again, an overview, um, kind of the, the structure of what is called the open studio process, um, we really focus on process versus product. We begin with that intention, the no commenting principle. We actually encourage you to reference one another. Like it naturally, when you work in a community space, you're going to get ideas from each other. Um, so we don't want to be like, oh, there's no copying, but really encourage you to like follow the energy, energy of those around you to get ideas as a way of of informing your own work. We'll give you instructions and materials. We're gonna create um, for a bit, and then um, we'll come back together and um, do a witness writing. Um, I just wanna share a little bit about how we might share this in a classroom. Um, so, excuse me, I'm gonna pretend that you're in my classroom. Um, and I, um, on the wall here, um, this is very much how I would teach this in um, a physical space, or even if you come into our studio, um, these are examples of intention starters. Some, some of you may know what it's like to write an intention. Um, today, I'm going to pick the example of um, I honor because today we're going to be focusing on honoring somebody in our life or something that we're grateful for. So I'm just going to do that as a suggested starting point. We always do our intentions in present tense language because we want to teach our students the skills to claim responsibility for being present and, and managing their own emotions in real time. Um, in addition to um, intention starters, we also would be focusing on specific um, emotional and visual art curriculum for the day, or I'm sorry, vocabulary words for the day. Um, so our four vocabulary words that we want to be mindful to integrate into our lessons are the ability to reflect, to build relationships, to follow our intuition, and to appreciate our each other and our work. And then in terms of my visual art vocabulary, I'm going to be teaching the word banners and what a dowel is. Um, so those are specific words that you can draw on. Some people just integrate it um, throughout the lesson. Um, and we also, as part of our intention, we want to be thinking about our essential questions. So for this particular lesson, we're going to ask you to think about when you're honoring in your intention. So everyone can kind of get out a pen or paper. Um, we use these little cards now at the studio, which are kind of fun. So you'll see on this side of my postcard, it says intention. You're going to reflect on how you're feeling and the state of what you'd like to gain from your art making time. So here you would write out, I honor who or what am I thankful for? What emotions do I feel when I think of my special person? 
And how can I honor or appreciate the values that I want to live? So for example, if I want to live with courage or kindness, my intention might be, I honor um, my um, daughter and appreciate her um, value of being an artist or being a kind person. Um, so something like, I'm just giving that as an example. Um, so are there any questions about how to write this type of intention? Um, sometimes we just encourage people to, you know where you're at right now, like you may have been rushing around and you might need to just kind of calm down and check in with your body and just, you know, write for a little bit till you get to a place where you feel like you can do that. But again, Sarah, we're, we're, will you read, will you read your intention again? The one on here or... Well, this is just like what we write at the studio. Reflect on how you're feeling and the state of mind and what you'd like to gain from the art making time. But for this specific lesson, we also want to state like I honor. Who are you going to honor today? Um, do you who or what are you thankful for? Because it can be a person, but it can also be like a group or, you know, you may have um, an organization or a cause that you're super, super grateful for. So it doesn't just have to be about a specific person. Um, and then what emotions come to mind when you think of that special person in your life or, or cause or organization? Um, and how can you honor or appreciate the values that you want to live that they may, um, you know, inspire you for? And I think I, yeah, on the screen is a little example of this little card too. So. <laughs> so do you want them to take a couple minutes to write? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. We'll take about two minutes to write an intention. here. Okay, if you can bring your writing to a stopping point, we just want to give you a little enough time to make art today. And if you need to take a little bit of time, like if you're not done doing your intention, that's okay. Just pause for now um, and you can get started. You can, you know, finish it up once we get started with the art making. Um, and then you can just jump right into art making. Um, so we wanted to introduce some of the materials first. Um, so we've kind of got all of them laid out on the table um, at the moment. Um, we do have these cool little bags that we give out to schools when we do this sort of project in schools. And it's sort of like everything is in the bag, ready to go, wrapped up nice and you know neat so that they can sort of unpack it and discover all the materials that they get inside. It's like a really fun way to... <laughs> to bring all the uh, all the materials to the kids. Um, 
So we've got two different examples of that. This is kind of how we would um, wrap up a pre-cut banner so that you can see. Um, so the banners are cut into approximately 10 by 24, mm -hmm. um, 12 inches long. We kind of gave you instructions for this in advance um, on preferably like a heavyweight cotton that you can glue to. Um, so when we're in a classroom, we actually will put this on a piece of long foil because it helps it for drying purposes and to move around the classroom, especially we work in a lot of really large Chicago public schools. So we may have like 30 kids in a classroom at a time. Um, so we even do this on the floor in some schools. And you can see here, we have a little baggie that has lots of pre-cut fabric bits inside it. And you wanna just have like a range of geometric shapes and patterns. Um, you can even like have them select ones that remind them of the person that they're trying to honor or what they're, you know, kind of the, the mood or the feeling of what they're trying to convey today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got, those are sort of examples of how you can bring it to schools or to different environments that you're going to bring them to. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, we've got dowels to sort of, so that you can hang them up. Yeah, so this is like the type of thicker one you can just get at Michael's. They sell them in a pack of, of dowels, but you can actually just use like a barbecue skewer and just clip the sharp end of it too. So you can get those at any kitchen store. Mm -hmm. And this is actually an example of one that you can buy. I think what we can buy this on Amazon, right? Yeah, we've got a link for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's blank. This one's decorated on one side. Um, but it's blank and it's got the dowel already on it. It's sewn onto it and it's got a string that you can hang it. But what we've been doing is we go ahead, we glue the dowel. So I can just do a quick demo as far as that goes. So I've just got a scrap, like I've got my cut piece and that's gonna be my banner. So I can go ahead, if you wanna tilt the, and typically we might do this like last typically during, you know, when we're at schools. Um, but essentially you're going to put the dowel right there. You want to make sure it's long enough. This one's a little short, so I might cut the fabric. Um, but you want to make sure it's long enough. You put it, you know, maybe I would say a little over an inch down so that you can adhere this part. You can put glue along the top and just wrap it around. So then you can go ahead and hang it from either end. But a lot of the time it's easier to do that at the end, so I'm not gonna do that quite yet with mine. Um, and then we've got a couple of different examples of the materials that you can use. So we've got feathers and string, a lot of like soft. I think I might even turn the screen off just to show this mm -hmm. on the table a little better. <laughs> okay. we're just adjusting really quick <laughs> yeah so there's you know we have little balls at bar little bowls of yarn you want to show the ribbon one yeah mm -hmm. we've got a lot of ribbon that you can cut up you can you know you can use it to line the banner you can use it to make lettering whatever you want to use it for. Rick Rack is really fun because you can get this in different colors at like sewing shops, embroidery thread to like, especially with your older students who can do sewing. Um, you want to have a nice range of that. Mm -hmm. We've got some buttons too. We have a really wide range of sizes, colors, textures. So if you, again, if you have older kids that can sew them on, they can do that. You can also glue them on just as easy. So with younger kids, or if you're not savvy to sewing, that's totally fine. You can just glue it. And we also um, have pre-cut words that they can add with glue, um, as well as stickers. Like you can get different colored stickers and shapes and things too. So this works well with some of the younger kids. We work in special needs classrooms as well. So uh, making things that are sensory, um, you know, aware and, and different types of media for that too. Mm -hmm. um, how do I go back to our screen here? Let's go back here. Okay. So before we get started, cause we're, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, after this slide and we'll we'll make art for a little while. Um, 
So before we get started, um, I do want to let you know that the music that we select for this, we do like having music in the background. Um, typically, we select something that doesn't have lyrics um, or it's in a, you know, a language that nobody really knows so that um, there's less association with the words and they're really just more feeling, um, you know, the emotions that are coming to them with the music. So a lot of the time it'll be calm or if you want to bring more energy into the room, it might be lively percussion, you know, geared music. But for today, we kind of want to create a calmer environment. So we're going to kind of put in some more calm music and it'll all be instrumental. So um, you'll be able to kind of focus on, you know, how that's making you feel in your body and how you want to sort of put it into your artwork as well. Um, and yeah, so during the art making process, we're going to ask you if you are comfortable, um, you can turn your camera on and you see how we tilted our laptop just so that it's, you know, you can kind of see the workspace. We like doing that so that you have more of a communal art making experience. So you can see everyone's work. If you want to reference people's work, you can. Again, if you're not comfortable with that, that's totally fine. Um, and yeah, so we can get started in, you know, if you guys will turn off this screen so that we can kind of see the gallery. And again, just as a reminder, if you just want to think about somebody that you know, whether it's a person, an organization, a concept, um, even you can choose to be grateful for yourself as well. I, you know, that's totally fine. Um, so think about who you're grateful for or what you're grateful for and just go ahead and express it on your, on your banners and we can come back when we're done. Yeah, we'll probably come back in about a half an hour just to start explaining the wrap up, but you can kind of keep working while we're talking too. So um, we will put music on until um, for the next, in a, for about a half an hour. Um, so feel free to um, work on your banner. And we will be monitoring the chat too. So if there's questions in the chat, we will try to respond.
Okay, um, I've, oops. I've turned down the music. Um, feel free to keep working while I talk to you about the next uh, part of the process. I'm gonna actually go back to our screen share here. Um, and I mentioned um, at the beginning how we do the intention writing before we make the art. Um, but try to just bring your art to a comfortable stopping point, knowing that you can always come back and visit it later, um, especially with this project, we know that it's pretty time consuming and that you very well will not have finished today, but that's okay because um, we very frequently witness our work um, prior to completion. Um, so um, for this portion, um, I would like to just kind of explain what our um, witness writing is. Um, essentially witness writing is a form of reflective writing about your work. Um, so the simplest way to witness write is to kind of just um, get pen and paper and um, free associate. What do you see in your image? What shapes, what colors, what movements, textures? Um, is there a subject in there? Um, do you want to um, look at the image and see what it may say to you? Um, so we actually, um, for our um, curriculum, we do specific um, reflection witness questions to help prompt you to get ideas for your witness writing connected to this specific lesson. So for this particular one, we might say, if your gratitude banner could talk, what would it say? And um, what qualities do you appreciate in your special person? Did your banner say something about who you wanna be and what qualities that you value? Um, so those are some things just to think about as you do um, your witness writing. Um, again, nobody's going to comment. This is more for you personally um, to reflect on your writing. So we're going to take about um, 10 minutes to just do a bit of a reflective writing. So we'll just have it quiet while we do that. Are there any questions about witness writing? Sorry, just due to time, we're gonna just do five minutes for witness writing.
Okay, if you could try to bring your writing to a stop. Um, I'm sorry, I ended up sharing this slide perhaps after you started writing, but those same questions that I had read from are in this slide and we will be sharing the PDF after so that you can see what how we did that. Um, so um, we don't have a, enough time for everybody to share today, but um, uh, if we were doing this with a group, um, we would come back together and we even do this. I may just stop the share for right now and bring us all together. Um, so you, um, if you're comfortable, you um, are welcome to hold up your banner and share your intention and your witness writing. Um, or one or the other, we always give this as a choice or option. We never force anybody to share, um, but we can take a couple minutes if, if anybody would like to um, take the opportunity to try intention and or witness writing. You can also just read like a sentence or word if you prefer that as well. Would anybody like to share any of their work? I see one hand up, Michelle. If you would could unmute, that would be great. Yes. Um, okay, so I'll show the banner first. Or you can, if you can hold it up while you read, or is it still sure. wet? Yeah. Okay, great. Kind of hard to see. Um, can hurt. My, my intention was I honor the people that are bold enough to speak about climate change. And I'll just read a little bit. Um, Life still manages to go on and I wonder how and why when all the people doing their jobs to either destroy or help humanity live on, we all have to come home and face our loved ones. And if there is love, then I know I'll be okay. And that's it. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share? I can share mine. Okay. Okay, so I'll read my intention first. I honor my mother and reflect on her values of honesty, empathy, and generosity. Come on. <laughs> Can you see that okay? <laughs> and then my witness was gold, not metallic, but like golden flowers, daffodils trimmed with leaves and cloves, clovers, Green and gold, a display of growth and progress, nostalgic symbolism that helps me to reflect on why I'm grateful for mom. Fostered growth, development as a person, the person who I am today. Instilling her values while, while I grew up, values of family and empathy, values of creativity and curiosity. Thank you, Maura. Would anybody else like to share? Uh, Claire O'Leary. Oh, there you are. Can you unmute Claire? <laughs> my piece is on the table, so I'm gonna move my laptop over. Hang on. Um, and as you can see it, it says you are brave. I'll read my intention. Um, I honor my son for being creative and brave with his feelings. And my witness, you are brave, you are always brave. Brave words and thoughts in being who you want to be and having your voice heard, you can do anything. 
Thank you, Claire. Okay, anybody else wanna share? And if you don't wanna share your writing, if you would be willing to just hold up your piece, that's also a, a nice way to see what we've done here today. Susan, can you hold yours back a little bit so we can see? Yeah, it's a little blurry when it's held up too close to the computer. And thank you, Wendy. Okay. Um, I'll share my witness. Um, I wrote, um, I see him at the trunk of the tree, heart strong, mighty, and centered. He's been to depths that I'll never know. He's in a stable healing space. I see the satin pink making the trunk stand up and grow stronger. Green foliage expands, wholesome buttons and radiating blossoms contained movement encircling my heart center, grateful. Well, just in um, what we frequently do after we do um, witness sharing is we'll just ring the bell. So if we could just take a moment of silence and listen to that. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we have a hard time getting the screen to share. Okay. Um, so um, in this project, display is also like kind of another um, method of exploring, honoring someone and being grateful. Um, so if you're a practicing artist, you know, that display is almost, you know, it's, it's a huge part of um, viewing artwork. Um, so on this slide, um, this was at a middle school that we worked at um, doing sort of a similar project, the gratitude banners. Um, and they displayed their banners, you know, throughout the school. So it made it sort of more of a community um, experience for them. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it was sort of an opportunity for them to come together and, you know, arrange their banners in a way that they thought was, you know, visually pleasing. Um, and they were able to kind of show the entire school, you know, these are the people that I'm grateful for. This is, you know, this is how much I care about this certain person. Um, but yeah, it, it makes it a community experience um, and a very intentional way to honor the person that you're grateful for. So in thinking of how you're gonna display your banners, if you want to display them, um, think, you know, you might think about somewhere where you're going to look at it frequently or place it in an area that reminds you of that person, um, sort of displaying it in an intentional way that, um, sort of just makes you contemplate the artwork and that person a little more. Um, so I just wanted to share these are just um, 
to let you know that with each of our um, lessons in our curriculum, they're in alignment with um, state social emotional learning goals. So we're in Illinois, which was the first state in the country to establish social emotional learning standards. So um, that's because our um, the consortium for academic and um, social emotional learning is based in downtown Chicago. So we managed to get a, an early start on this work and um, uh, work with a social emotional learning consultant from that consortium. So um, all of these lessons are in alignment with those standards, as well as Illinois um, high school visual arts, as well as um, PE and health standards. Just so if you are trying to um, do a program like this in your schools, you can use this information to share with your administrators and different folks that work in these departments. So those are listed with each um, lesson. Um, this is, um, if you're interested in um, getting the full curriculum um, with the 12 sequences, you can use the QR code. Um, it's also on our website, which we'll be sharing at the end. Oops, I don't know, every time I do that, it does that. Um, we also do um, trainings here at Open Studio Project. Um, a lot of people take what's called our facilitator training. We do this hybrid, similar to what you did today, um, where you can um, learn the OSP methodology and get certified in it. So that includes like the intention and writing piece. We do, we walk you through several, about five different workshops and you get to meet a lot of the different people that facilitate here. And then at the end, you get to try it out back at home in your own workspaces. So we have one coming up soon for that. Um, we also, um, before we did the high school curriculum, we actually wrote a K to eighth version of this. So um, these projects are more appropriate for these grade levels. Although I think the high school one can um, definitely be used with those upper middle school grades. Um, but this also has 12 lessons. We even have a pre-K one that's available digitally. Um, and we have a separate training that's specific for these curriculums, depending on if you want to learn K to eighth or high school, you can do one, two, or um, an independent day for high school or all three. Um, that will be coming up in February. Um, so we just want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, you can, you know, Join our mailing list, uh, go to our website, follow us on Instagram, um, all those things. Um, and we're also available if you guys have questions or comments about today, we can spend a couple minutes. I know we um, ran pretty close to time because we wanted to give you a lot of art time, but we can stick around for a few minutes and answer questions if Heidi's okay with that. <laughs> I am. Um, so if you want to move to the next slide, I'll just do a quick wrap up and then we can um, stay on for a little bit after. So I just want to thank everyone for spending part of your day with us uh, for such a meaningful session. Um, we do have a few upcoming HOPE series as well already on the calendar. And then we have a couple of our trainings um, in early 2023 that are open for registration as well. Um, I am also going to put in the chat, um, we are recruiting for 2023 facilitators for HOPE. So if you are interested in joining our community as a facilitator, um, we really welcome proposal submissions. So there is um, information here in the chat about how to go about completing that form. And of course, you can always ask me if you have questions. Um, so please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that does include the survey. I also just put the survey in the chat. Um, so we really appreciate your feedback. It helps us ensure that we're best serving you all in our community. And of course, um, any future topics that you might be interested in, please share those as well. And we really hope you have a wonderful weekend and we look forward to seeing you at a future HOPE workshop. And as uh, we just said, we'll stay on for a little bit to answer any additional questions. Did I stop the share then? Oh, Michelle, you have a question? Yeah, I actually have just a materials question on what kind of glue you guys were using. Oh, sorry, we didn't point that out. Um, so we um, frequently get these different sizes of tacky glue. 
Okay. Um, they, they actually make really itty bitty ones that we will put in our little school kits. Okay. So those, yeah, Mod Podge, um, Maura's holding up Mod Podge as well, which is great too, but um, yeah, generally we use the tacky glue just for this specific project, but for our K to eighth curriculum, they just use regular glue even. Okay, got it, thank you. And uh, you know, just as long as it can stick. I have a question. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you maintain relationships with like places like the Chicago Public Schools and stuff? It seems like a lot to manage. How does a, a little shop like yours, assuming that you're just a little shop, um, you know, manage your, your partnerships, your really important partnerships? Yeah, so um, we pretty much started working um, with Chicago Public Schools about a month before the shutdown. Um, we had created and kind of in alignment with this curriculum, the K to eighth curriculum that we wrote, we developed a residency program. So all of um, our residency programs in Chicago Public Schools utilize that um, K to eighth curriculum that I showed you. Um, so we partner, um, we have uh, teaching artists and art therapists on our staff. And um, we partner with what are called arts liaisons, as well as school counselors at the independent schools. Um, so we're lucky that we have a network here that um, connects us. So we frequently will present to the district-wide school counselors, uh, make those connections. And then um, usually it's the school counselors who request the residency from their school principals. And we're fortunate to have a philanthropic um, program here that supports um, arts partnerships in the schools. So we um, also uh, apply for grants, but we also are a vendor in our um, district. So um, if principals have um, the ability to utilize social emotional learning funds, or sometimes a lot of the schools we work with don't even have art teachers. So um, they like to supplement this program um, to try to meet that need. So um, it also can go into gen ed classes in Illinois because we meet the standards. So gen ed teachers can also bring it to their classrooms. So we've partnered with art teachers, gen ed teachers, and mostly school counselors. So we can even do like emotional support groups um, and behavioral intervention groups as well because we have art therapists on staff. Um, someone was asking about the kits for the schools. Um, so the, the, that was what we showed you here. Is that what you're typing in there more? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so those, you know, we um, are very fortunate here because we're a nonprofit and we're in a university town. We work with a lot of volunteers and interns here. Um, we have a local art schools too. So during the pandemic, we were pumping out hundreds and hundreds of these kits to deliver to the schools. And um, we have big, big purple bags. So we were doing like, you know, 100 kits per school. So, um, you know, we would we are sending those down on a rented truck all throughout. Um, but now it's really great to be back in person because we don't have to utilize as many materials. Um, we can, you know, bring a lot of those back. But yeah, so every, every Thank you. Yeah, they can be prepackaged as well. Um, so now they go out more in these bins. I can show you like, what a, a what a bin looks like. We have these big bins <laughs> that go out to the school. So this is like an example of our um, art animals lesson, which is lesson number one. Um, so pretty much these big bins are on wheels and they have all the supplies for that particular project in separate containers. So they're really easy because we really are very used to having to like pop up and um, bring things into existing classroom spaces. So, you know, prep is a big part of what we do. <laughs> All right, I think most of our other questions were answered unless there's anything else. Um, you can always email us. Um, there's the info email or you can email Myself, Sarah at OpenStudioProject.org. Um, Maura is our art therapist on staff, M-A-I-R-A. 
at openstudioproject.org. She, she organizes a lot of our, our therapy-based programs, and we will be, um, we're going to be starting to offer more individual art therapy as well. So, um, yep, lots of, lots of expansion going on here. It's great to see people from all over the world. Um, yeah, Susan? Yes, I was just wondering, the training that you're doing in December, it's in person, correct? It's hybrid. So some people oh, join okay. in person in the studio just because they like to be in the studio setting. But yeah. if you can see, I have a big TV behind us. So we, um, we also bring people in virtually to those. Okay, so we can find out more about that on your website? Yep, there's a section called professional development when you go to the, or if more, if you're able to put even the direct link or I can even put that slide back up if you know how to do a QR code. I don't always know how to do it. This, this is the SEL training. This one here is the um, yeah. training. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, because uh, it's not necessarily uh, easy to get um, or to fit it in that way, but it could fit it in as a hybrid, perhaps. So it would be a lovely opportunity. Um, I'm connected to the archives in uh, Canada. And yeah. so there's so, there's a lot of alliances between the models. So I'm interested to find out more. Or I know quite a bit about OSP, but it's still wonderful to kind of be more involved. Yes, we're very familiar with Janice Timboto's work. Yeah, her and Pat Allen are good friends and, you yep. know, everybody's kind of doing it in their own direction. But I'd say like we're doing a lot of like pushing it out into community spaces and especially this expansion of the school based work is pretty unique to this organization. So, yeah, and we're working. Yeah, with the homeless, we're not, we have a program with the blind. So definitely reaching a lot of newer um, populations where we're having to adapt the method. I really appreciate the fact that you um, included all the aspects of the curriculum in terms of how it fits mm -hmm. um, and how you've developed it in terms of the sequencing and things like that too, because those specifics are applicable elsewhere in terms of, and so it's really great to see what you've done. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, we're all, not, yeah, what's up? It's just not easy to do all that you've done in terms of get it uh, accepted and, you know, um, doing all the liaison and partnership. So I appreciate the other um, person's question about how you've developed all of those things because it's it's a lot of work to, to develop them and it takes time too. So thank you so much for everything. Yes, for sure. And I'd say that the world has changed dramatically in the last, as you know, um, the, you know, I think there's, it, it's amazing that we've had as much growth we, as we have at the school-based level because we've been serving youth for over 20 years. It's just that it's, finally being recognized and yeah. it certainly helps to have the educational standards to back it up to mm -hmm. support the work as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I hope everyone has a great weekend and um, stay in touch. <laughs> thank you. <Care>. Thank you. <laughs> great to see you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.